With this $30 to $40 device, you'll be able to hook up your old bookshelf speakers to your new TV and control the volume with your TV remote. Just the logic of recording the dose and the flow starting. I have an LG C355 inch OLED TV. That specific model doesn't matter. I'm just letting you know it's a new TV. I have these old Fostex powered speakers that I've had for maybe like 15 years. They work perfectly well. The funny thing is with all these new smart TVs, there's less plugs for you to plug in your old devices. All the devices that you can buy nowadays are a simple plug and play solution and they kind of want to steer you in that direction for multiple reasons. But if you want to use your old stuff, you still can. It is an HDMI ARC, A-R-C converter and it is CEC compatible and I will make sense of all of this very soon. This costs about 30, 35 US, 40 Canadian. There are different kinds that exist. Uh, this is the particular one that I got and it works on my TV and it probably would work on yours. The affiliate links are in the description, cost you nothing, but it does give me a little kickback. If you're in my current situation, two powered speakers, which means there's no receiver, they have their own power plug and everything. This is just a stereo system 2.0, but this probably would also work with a 2.1, 3.1, 5.1, but you would likely need a receiver for that. My speakers have in the back the RC input, which is the little white and red for left and right. And there's also a quarter inch jack. You'll have to adjust this tutorial based on what your device has, but either way, you just need to have the compatible plugs that would be able to work with this device. You have red and white RCA jacks. You also have a headphone jack. There also is SP, DIF, and coaxial. Any of those would work. You could also use this with a receiver from what I can tell, but this is my situation currently. If you have a receiver, you can always plug all of those together. Find a plug that hooks up from here to your situation, receiver, speakers, whatever it is. I researched everything and it was actually quite difficult to find this information, even though it's not an actual difficult solution. So please do like this video. It will help feed the algorithm. It'll help other people find this video as well. Just a disclaimer, I am not a pro. I'm not guaranteeing that any of this is gonna work on your device. There's just so many compatibility issues that can happen. So this is all third party products. Manufacturers aren't creating their own devices. They want you to buy all their proprietary stuff, which they can guarantee will work. And also, you know, it's in the same ecosystem. You're doing this at your own risk. The quality of this is to be seen. I will update my description as I always do. If there are any changes, please do comment in the description down below with your situation if you do try this out and give all the information that you can, your TV, which product you bought, everything. Uh, it will help other people as well. The device I did settle with is this HDMI ARC ARC converter and it also is CEC compatible. Sometimes they write it, sometimes they don't. Just make sure that it's written just to cover your bases. The instruction manual does specify for CEC to work. You must use the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on this particular device, probably because that's where they wired it. So that's what I'll do. And that's the cables I have anyway. I will link a few common cables for y'all in the description. You need the HDMI that is ARC or eARC compatible, and uh, you need CEC on both your device and on your TV. This comes with a USB to power it. I power directly with the TV. You could always use an outlet if you want with an adapter. You'll need an HDMI cable as well. I'll link everything in the description for you, including this particular device. You will also need audio cable of some sort, like I mentioned, depending on your speaker or receiver needs. So on your TV, CEC is necessary for the volume control in particular because CEC stands for Consumer Electronic Control and each brand has their own branded version name of this for some reason. So you may not find it under CEC in your device settings. Do a quick search online, we'll easily be able to give you that answer. To make this work, plug everything in correctly. The first thing on this one is that you have a switch output. And since we are going with the ARC in this case, that's what we're gonna go with. And then we'll need to plug in the power supply as well as the HDMI. We will put the, in my case, speaker headphone jack and that will go to my speaker. Make sure that you're plugged into the HDMI ARC or eARC on your TV. That is how the whole system is hooked up. You have TV, this that acts as a translator between the digital signal of the TV and the analog signal on the speakers. 
and this goes in the middle, needs power, feeds it to both sides. The other thing you have to do on your TV is then you'll have to go into your TV settings. This is gonna vary a little bit from TV to TV, of course, from manufacturer to manufacturer, even from model to model. Essentially, you're going into the sound settings and you wanna choose HDMI ARC. In the sound setting, you wanna find the HDMI ARC output and you wanna set that to PCM or LPCM. Those are uncompressed audio signals, so Dolby Digital won't work because those are audio codecs that are compressed. But if you're going with bookshelf speakers or like 2.1 system, you're not really doing a big surround sound system anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And with uncompressed sound, you are also getting arguably better quality. And I did find my speakers did sound better than on my previous TV, so there's that. The other thing you have to do is turn on the CEC. Like I said on the LG, it's branded Simply Link, so I had to make sure to turn that on. The sound then worked. And this is what it sounded like out of the TV speakers versus my bookshelf speakers. Just for fun before and after. You're gonna get better sound quality, obviously, than the TV. It's gonna cost way less than a sound bar especially if you have this already hanging around, but it'll cost way less than a sound bar that will come to the sound of just even pretty small bookshelf speakers. If you wanna invest a thousand bucks in a sound system, go ahead, it's your choice. But you can actually reuse a lot of your old stuff for this. What's really great also is that you're gonna be reusing a lot of your old equipment. They don't have to go to waste. I bought this particular one instead of other simpler ones just because I kind of future-proof it. So if I ever want to expand my sound system, I could. I believe the way that this all works as well is that I will be able to plug in console, game consoles in the future into the HDMI ports on my TV. So the video will work that way and the sound will still output through my speakers. There are possibly issues of hearing a pop or click sound. Apparently this is fine for the speakers, but it just sounds annoying. You can try lowering the volume if you have a volume knob on your speakers and you won't hear it as much and just increase the volume on your TV. Or a high pitched sound coming out of your TV. If that's the case, you could always try plugging this, not directly into your TV, but plugging the USB into a adapter into a wall outlet. And that could perhaps help with the interference. Another shortcoming is that it disables your TV speakers, which in my case is fine, but it's not like you can add to it, it replaces it. So I hope that helped you. And perhaps you'll be interested as well in this video that you can check out on my channel. I will see you there, bye.